Today we're going to look at the best ways to prepare for the upcoming June update, with a beta coming April 7th that will add the much-anticipated fleet carriers to Elite. We still know little, but what we do know is these will be able to carry 16 ships with landing pads of various sizes, will be able to jump 500 light years, and while there will be a cooldown period, they will be able to jump on our schedule rather than some set time. They will use a new fuel, tritium, that once we have more details on, I'll cover how to gather in the most efficient ways possible. Finally, players will have the ability to adjust tariffs and the buying and selling prices of commodities in the market, bringing possible new gameplay. Today we're going to look at preparing for another piece we know, their cost. At 5 billion credits, they'll require quite a lot of work to purchase, so let's look at a few of the most efficient ways to earn credits to prepare for this expense. At the moment, the most profitable gameplay available is wing laser mining of low temperature diamonds. These have ranged in value recently between 1 and 1.6 million credits per ton, with demand and price varying on a daily basis. When mining in a wing of four large class ships, such as Type 9s or Cutters, each with 512 tons of cargo space, each wing member can earn as much as 240 million credits per hour when you consider the additional wing trade profits, with something in the 200 million range being the average. As we've covered this previously, I'll link to that tutorial here, as nothing has changed with that method. The next highest paying method at the moment would be deep core mining for low temperature diamonds, which we've also covered. Again, I'll include a link to the previous guide as it covers the subject in full detail. Depending on your luck and ship, you can earn around 100 million credits per hour with much more engaging gameplay. However, this isn't effective in wings as you cannot share the resources created by the core explosion. There are a few other methods to mention for commanders who don't yet have the resources to purchase the ships necessary for these methods, primarily the Type 9 Heavy and Crate Mark II, both of which I've covered build for in the past. The best method for a new commander to earn credits quickly would be the updated Road to Riches. That is using exploration to scan water and earth-like worlds. In a ship as simple as the hauler, you can earn as much as 30 million credits an hour, allowing you to earn the roughly 270 million you'd need for a fully outfit laser mining Type 9 quickly. Another notable method is passenger missions in Rubigo. Again, something we've covered previously. In a medium-class ship such as the Python, you can earn around 70 million with a larger ship such as the Anaconda, bringing this to above 100 million per hour. This method carries some risk as you'll likely be transporting criminals, so you'll need to be on your toes. While we don't know how we'll gather tritium, as it's possible and perhaps likely this will be a raw material and accessible via the material traders, this is also an excellent time to stock up on raw materials. In the past, I've covered the Crystal Shard sites in several videos. These are sites roughly 1,500 light years from the bubble, with each site offering a specific grade 4, the highest for raws, save for selenium. To complete the full loop and max out all your high grade raws, again, save for selenium, takes about 5 hours at most. Using a material trader and doing this twice will have you max out every single raw material possible. If you've completed that and have the necessary credits, you may consider stocking up your data and manufactured materials. Again, we've covered the most efficient methods for that. Once again, this will be linked below. Using those methods, you can get 100 Imperial Shielding, a Grade 5 Manufactured, in about 20 minutes, and 100 Aberrant Shield Pattern Analysis, a Grade 4 Data, in about 15 minutes. Using the Material Traders means you can acquire any of the engineering and synthesis materials you need more efficiently than any time in the game's history. Regardless of the method you use, at best you're looking at 20 plus hours of gameplay to earn the credits required for these massive ships. And while this may seem extreme to some, in elite time, this really isn't significant. And in this pilot's opinion, is quite reasonable for this in-game content. While I'm sure every player watching would like their own, there are still many unanswered questions about how these carriers will work. Will they have a mission board, making them useful to BGS players? Will we be able to allow our friends to land on them, and if so, how? Will we be able to now populate the galaxy with stations, extending humanity's reach far into the deep? And who will be the first commander to reach Sagittarius A-Star or Beagle Point with a carrier? Something I'm sure many in the exploration community are keen to accomplish. Regardless of these answers, it's nice to finally, after such a long glut of essentially zero new content, that the galaxy will be getting an infusion of new opportunities for gameplay. As soon as we know how the tritium necessary to jump these behemoths can be acquired, you can rest assured I'll cover the most efficient methods so you can use these carriers as effectively as possible. This has been Commander Exegius of edtutorials.com, reminding you to fly dangerously, and thanks for watching.
If you need credits for fleet carriers or any other reason, see my playlist covering the methods mentioned here, and that you'll visit edtutorials.com for news and guides from a wide array of top players. <laughs>